The station wagon, once the staple of family transportation, supplanted by the minivan first, and then the SUV and crossover. And yet there is a luxury niche market for excellent wagons today. This is one of them, the Volvo V90 Cross Country. Let's take it for a spin today on Family Wheels. The station wagon has almost disappeared from the North American market due to the dominance of the crossover and the SUV. So what do we have in terms of wagons? Well, we have this, the V90. Volvo also has the smaller V60. And Mercedes has the E450 wagon. Audi has the A6 all-road. And BMW has a wagon, but they don't sell it in North America. And in fact, the declining sales for the wagon in North America have hit Volvo too because they discontinued the regular V90 wagon which is sleeker looking than this, doesn't have the cladding over the wheel wells and is slightly lower. So why have a wagon instead of an SUV or a crossover? Well, I'm not the salesperson, you have to make up your mind. But if we look at our individual or family needs and wants, Station wagon satisfies a lot of them. No, it doesn't have three rows, so if you've got a parcel of kids, then you're gonna need three rows. However, if you've just got a couple of kids, you go skiing, camping, holidays, a wagon like this is going to hold all your stuff. Terrific visibility all around. No, you can't see through the pickup truck in front of you. You have the practicality. You also have the slightly sportier nature. It's time for the Family Wheels cargo test as we put three bags of groceries, a backpack, and a stroller into the Volvo. Well, handling our standard cargo is obviously no problem for the V90 Cross Country. There's lots of room left over, and that's with the second row of seats up. Fold them down, you get more than double the room. So again, a pretty compelling case for the wagon versus the crossover or SUV. We have a 12 volt, 120 watt outlet back here and underneath here, a compact spare tire. Always a nice touch these days when so many vehicles don't have a spare. Additionally, the cover for the cargo area over the spare has its own prop rod to hold it up while you're taking the spare out. Thoughtful. One feature that is thoughtful but also a bit problematic is this cover. It comes back here just as any other cars would and it can go into an upper position to cover up higher cargo, but this flap is just a little too large. If I were using this vehicle and I didn't need the security of the cover, I'd take it out. And the Volvo has aced our baby seat test with the rear-facing child seat in the back, the one that takes up the most room. I've still got inches of room in front of me. And like everywhere else in the V90 cross country, we've got generous room in the back seat. I've got the front seat set up for me. I'm five feet, 11 inches tall, 180 centimeters. There's lots of room in front of me. And in the back, we've got adjustable HVAC controls as well as two USB-C ports. Additionally, there are air outlets here on the door posts and the icing on the cake in luxury vehicles these days, a huge panoramic sunroof. Compared to its competitors from Audi and Mercedes-Benz, this is actually the value play. You get just as many features, depending on how you spec it up. You get a whole load of features, and this car costs less than the A6 all-road from Audi and the E450 wagon from Mercedes-Benz. It has slightly less horsepower, but Look, we've got 295 horses here, turbocharged, supercharged. You got all the pep you need for around town, going up to the ski hill, or going on a long trip. Well, let's check out our Volvo wagon here on Elliott Street. Now, regular viewers know that I use this street a lot because it's got a variety of surfaces, but no huge potholes. But it really reveals a lot about a car. It's quiet. The noise, vibration, and harshness are really well damped, but the car does not feel spongy or floaty at any time. 
Because the V90 wagon is competing against similar offerings from Audi and Mercedes-Benz, the luxury has to be there, and it is here in abundance. We've got lots of leather everywhere, this beautiful open pour wood in a, a medium to light color, great big display here, uh, touch panel, and a gigantic sunroof. The surfaces are just terrific, like the seat surfaces are, the leather is such high quality. In this case, we have heated and ventilated seats as well. Great takeoff when you need it, such as for freeway on-ramps. And so smooth, precise ride, excellent brakes, Volvo's reputation for safety. I would love to take this car on a long trip. The Volvo control setup is distinctive. It's pretty well all done through the center console here. The main feature across Volvo lately is Android Automotive. That's not the same as Android Auto. This is the Android system built into the car. Hey Google, which way to the Vancouver Airport? Sure, I'm setting your destination to Vancouver International Airport in Richmond. It's all built in. It is absolutely the simplest Google Maps interface you will ever encounter. So that's the good part of this. Hey Google, play City News 1130 radio. Sorry, CKWX isn't available on your car radio at the moment. You can install TuneIn to stream it. Apple CarPlay, on the other hand, is another story. Volvo told me months ago that they were working on integrating Apple CarPlay and were expecting it sometime in 2022. European luxury car makers charge plenty for popular options, although the base V90 Cross Country has plenty of comfort and safety features. But you could trim some of the $11,500 premium our review car carries over the base version. While the Bowers & Wilkins sound is among the best I've ever heard on the road, it adds a hefty $3,750. You could cut another $2,000 off the price by doing without head-up display and the 360-degree cameras. Opt for 19-inch wheels instead of 20s and you save a grand. But I'd go for the $3,750 lounge package that includes four-zone climate control and super deluxe front seats with cushion extension. Our denim blue paint job is subtle yet exquisite and worth the $900. And while it's a bit sneaky to demand $1,000 for a package that has a heated steering wheel, it does give you the option of built-in booster seats for the kids. <laughs> The Volvo V90 is an excellent car and as good an argument as any in favor of the station wagon. But what do you think? Leave us a comment, give us a like, and thanks for subscribing. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Richard Detman. See you next time on Family Wheels.